Day number 13, Picnic Table Talk. Andrew Capone for Horse Racing Nation. Kevin Strom with me again today in the backyard. Fans piling in. Will be an absolute packed day today. We have the Jim Dandy, the Grade 1 Vanderbilt. Phenomenal card on this day. Two highlight races to take a look at. We're going to start off here by uh, taking a look at this Grade 1 Vanderbilt. Small field, yet a good field. Before we jump into this, let's take a look at the Horse Racing Nation Track Trends Report. We have 67% of horses going wire to wire, six furlongs on the dirt. Kevin, what do you think about it? So, it's going to be a pretty square pick. But let's talk about Jackie's Warrior. Let's really talk about Jackie's Warrior. So, this horse stared Dream Shake in the face when Dream Shake was good at a mile and prevailed. This horse stared down Life is Good at seven furlongs and prevailed. Multiple G1 winning sprinter. 10 out of 12 on the dirt sprinting. Who in this field comes anywhere close to that type of class? Right? So normally, me being a handicapper and a gambler, I like to fade a 1-5 to five morning line. I don't see it here. This horse is way, way too classy to lose this race. None of these horses stand a chance. Um, some people will say Delgado has two in there. The six goes and tries to soften up Jackie's for Willie Boy to close. When has that worked against Jackie in the past? I'll wait. Looking at those early time form figures, on the pace figure here for that that pace scenario you just talked about, the six going, I don't even think the six gets on the show, on the withers. I don't even think you'd see the six get up on the withers there to even contest that pace. Um, I have to agree with you. I think Jackie's is, is, is a single here. I think this late pick five, there's opportunities to make at least one single with Jackie's. Um, let's talk about the second highlight race of the card, the Jim Dandy here. A little bit of a small field. Again, we have one scratch. We're scratching down the field of four. Um, let's talk a little bit about this setup here. We do, you know, we haven't had the biggest of fields for dirt routes so far. We're averaging 6.9 horses. We are seeing one through three winning at a 74% clip. So we are seeing a lot of inside bias here. I wouldn't necessarily take that in this type of race. I think four horses, I think we're going to see uh, a really good race nonetheless. Talk to me a little about why you're fading early voting. So this is the rematch, right? This is the rematch of early voting versus epicenter. And then we have Zanin coming off the break since the derby. Right, Zanin's working lights out. Um, Zanin's not going to be as far back as folks think in this race. Four horse race, you know, a bit of a jockey's race. Pratt's coming around. He started a little slow this meet, but he's, he's getting it. You know, Flavian's a world class jockey for a reason. Um, that Chad's a very talented horse. But let's talk about early voting for a second. That was a massive speed bias mm -hmm. for the Preakness race. Epicenter, for whatever reason, attempted to run as a closer that race against a massive speed bias on a track, right? So early voting got carried by that speed bias and Epicenter ended up closing into that speed bias, right? So if you look at the pace lines, early voting's lead, it didn't extend, it shrunk. Now you get a little shorter here, half furlong shorter, but Joel's not gonna give the same ride he gave Epicenter in the Preakness. He's gonna be much closer, you know, it's a smaller field. I'm personally gonna be at Epicenter here. We'll see if they go off, if the two goes off as a favorite or not. Um, but I think Epicenter wins by a fair margin here and really, really proves that he's the best three-year-old in training right now. Um, early voting's a talented horse. You know, Chad brings out the ghost after comparisons. Uh, I don't, I don't see it happening here. You know, nothing against Jose, nothing against Chad. You know, Chad has two of these four in here. Uh, I think Zandon is the Chad that you want. Um, I know this track will be speed favoring today. Uh, however, I think Epicenter is just, you know watching that run line last time and you know it was a bad ride by Joel. I think he makes up for it here and we see Steve Asmussen back in the winner's circle with Epicenter. I gotta ask who in this country is better than preparing a horse for a big stakes race than Brad Cox right now? Tony Port last time out Thistle Downs won the Ohio Derby um, yet a, a field that has come back not the greatest. Um, White Barrio we saw at the Haskell finish way out the back um, talk to me a little about Tony Port. Any interest here, possibly using underneath or as a beat? So Tony Port is a special place in my heart. It's a turf flight horse. So it comes from turf flight. Uh, having said that, this track is not going to be conducive to closers today. Um, it's just not. That's just not the way that this dirt has been. If, if you are going to close, you have to be way outside and in the middle of the stretch. Um, Tony Port, very, very talented horse. I don't think it's a G1 horse. 
So, you know, you're going to get a price on it if you like it. So I'm not going to talk you off of it, but I won't be using Tony today. So talk to me about your daily double and then pick three starting with stakes race. For stakes race. So we're going to pay close attention to the probables here. Uh, we're going to start with Jackie's and then we're going to see what it's paying the epicenter. So if we can do a 4-2 double, I'm looking for anywhere 450 or 5 to 1 on that. And you can play that pretty big because um, that's going to be slim in my opinions today. And then in what's called one of the get out races after that, the high price allowance race, take a look at that at the number 12. Uh, very short in the morning line, but very deserving. Broke its maiden uh, in kind of an incredible fashion. Uh, the connection is not a really too popular for connection. Jose doesn't ride for Todd too much. Uh, but that horse has been working with Annapolis. He's a very talented uh, turf stakes winning horse. Um, so if that horse runs back to form, and you know, I love betting second time starters um, you know, who, break their, who break their maiden at a route uh, first time out. So this horse stands to improve for me. Uh, ran a 113 on time form. That's an outstanding number for a maiden to run its, its first race ever. So I'm excited to see what this 12 has to offer. We'll be playing an ice cold pick three, four, two, 12. There you have it. It's going to be a little bit of a chalky card as, as we look at it right now. Opportunity to up that base five, ten, fifteen dollars on those pick threes. We'll be here every single day of Saratoga Meet on Picnic Table Talk. You can also catch us each morning, Saratoga Morning Report on Horse Racing Nation YouTube channel. Good luck with your bets today.